Good day, everyone, and welcome to the fifth of our LPGA Lunch Lesson Series. I am Cheryl Fish, Senior Manager of the LPGA Partnerships Team, and I'm happy to have all of you on our webinar today. Uh, you are joining us at 2 p.m., so while it may not be your lunch hour, it is lunch hour somewhere out in the world, so we hope these next 30 minutes will be valuable for you to improve your score on the golf course, but also your just general fitness. Um, before we get started, I would like to thank one of our very key partners here at the LPGA, NEC. They have provided this platform that we have been hosting all of these Lunch Lesson series on. So thank you, NEC, for your involvement, your partnership with us. If you all can give them a little clap for, you know, for helping us out through all of this. We also have some great pieces of this technology that I wanna share with you all today. So just like I mentioned, giving the golf clap, we have some emoticons, some emojis that you just saw come across the screen. But at any point during these next 30 minutes, you can like a comment, you can show hearts, clapping, et cetera. Yep, I see some coming through on the screen right now. Yes, thank you for sharing those. Those are um, available for you to do as an attendee. You also have that opportunity to ask questions of both um, Kay and Karen, who I'm getting ready to introduce you to right now. So please don't hold back any questions that you have related to our topic today on golf fit and fitness. We will try to answer them in these 30 minutes. If not, we will be sure to follow up after today's session, providing you with some great exercises. So we will try to um, cover as much as we can in these 30 minutes. So we've done this before. We've talked golf and fitness, but in that first 30 minutes, we really barely scratched the surface because it is so extensive, the two are that they go hand in hand. So while we've, we focused on stretching before a game or before practice, we are now gonna focus on what can you do, whether it's at home or in the gym, to improve your golf game, to improve your mobility? And these are wonderful five different body weight exercises. So no, guess what? No weights required. So I want to introduce you to who we have joining us today, our, our analyst, our panelist. Um, first with us is Kay Cockrell. She is a Golf Channel analyst and on-course commentator and former LPGA Tour professional. Kay, thank you so much for joining us again. This is your fifth one, so it's 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 a great friendly face to see every time. Definitely glad to be here. It's a beautiful day in San Francisco, and I'm glad to be doing this along with Karen. Yeah, and you've been traveling. So, I mean, you've been on the road with the Golf Channel, and you just got back from the, the U.S. Open, though, correct? I did. I was at, at Wingfoot watching the guys get terrorized most of the week by that tough golf course. It was a treat to be there working for Golf Channel, NBC, and Peacock, which was the new streaming um, device that, that's kind of the future of the way that we're probably going to be watching a lot of sports in the future. Yeah, and obviously seeing Bryson win it, and that's one of the big stories this year, is obviously his fitness level has drastically changed uh, within you know this year and the pandemic. So I think this is definitely a great topic to continue on in this current lunch lesson. Most definitely. Um, power golf is what is sort of dominating the landscape. And even players that are maybe average or above average length, they're always looking to get that little bit extra and also keep their bodies really strong so that they stay healthy throughout the season, long, a normally long season, or in this instance, last week, a very tough, major demanding golf course. You want to stay strong and fit throughout the week because you have to play all 72 holes and, and sort of get through that finish line. And we have the same scenario coming up in a couple weeks for the women that are going to be playing in their next major, the KPMG Women's PGA. Yeah, fit, you know, power and fitness isn't just a, man, a, a man's game. It's a, a, you know, a female's game as well. So um, next, I'd love to introduce you all. If you weren't here on our first um, lunch lesson where we focused on fitness, I have Karen Palacios Jansen. She is an LPGA teaching master professional, but she is also a certified personal trainer and Pilates instructor plus Golf Digest Magazine's top one of top 50 best fitness professionals. Karen, welcome. So glad to have you here as our resident fitness expert. 
Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to do this with Kay again, of course. And then, if it's not your computer, if you hear some buzzing, I'm right next to a golf course. They just happened to start mowing, so hopefully they'll move out in a second. I apologize for that. So, But um, I'm so excited to be here. And uh, of course, you know, um, we've all been kind of quarantined and maybe we haven't gotten into our fitness as much as we want to. And I would like to help you kind of boost not only your fitness, but golf as well. Yeah, and you know what, I, I've looked over what you're going to talk about today, and these are really so important, whether you're, you're a golfer or not. I mean, mobility, pulling and pushing, you know, those are movements we do in our daily life, rotation, and then just the raising and lowering of the body. So, I mean, these are great exercises, whether you're a golfer or not. So I think they're actually valuable in, in general to be talking about today. So I think both myself as well as everyone who's joining us are, are going to see the benefits of it in their daily life, not just their golf game. Yeah, you bring such a, a good point. And, you know, if you're young and healthy, you don't think about the way you move and, and um, the way your body functions. But as we get older, we lose that function if we don't practice some things. Um, so it's really, you know, to have an active lifestyle, it's, it's demanding. And we actually need to do things to practice, make sure we're mobile, make sure that we can, you know, squat, keep our grandchildren up, put things away, carry our groceries in. So you actually have to work at that. And uh, coincidentally, a lot of the things that we do for an active lifestyle are the things that we need for a good golf swing. So I'm going to try to correlate the two and have Kay help me um, explain some of these concepts. Well, I'm going to let you take it away from here. Like I said, you've got some great exercises you're going to show that they can do with body weight or with weights if they have them, you know, available in their home or in the gym. So, Karen, why don't you walk us through it? And, uh, you know, as I said to all of our attendees, please put questions in the chat box and we will follow up with some information after this webinar ends, as well as the link to the first one, because I know I already saw a couple notes that they missed it. So we want to make sure you're aware of where you can find all these great lunch lessons. So, Karen, I'll, I'll let you have, take it away. All right. So first, I just want to show you, you're wondering why I'm holding this little short club. This is called the Shorty Club, and it's short for a couple of reasons. It's short so that you can swing inside. You're not going to hit the ceilings or the walls. Um, and so if you don't get a chance to play or practice, you can go ahead and, and just take a couple of practice swings every day with this. And then this is my slope, and it's, it's a fitness bench to do exercises, but you can see it's curved. So later on, I'm going to show you how we rehearse uphill and downhill lives. So these are some things that you can practice at home if you don't get a chance to go to um, play or practice that often. But today I want to show you some exercises that you can do at home if you always wanted to start a fitness or a golf fitness program. These are some of the exercises that you should start to do to help build the foundation to, um, you know, really working out and getting into a program where you can do on a daily basis. So there are five functional movements that you need for an active lifestyle. And again, those are the same movements that you need for the golf swing. So the first one is just basic mobility. You need to have the ability to just move all your joints through all their range of motion. If you have some sort of impingement or imbalance, you're not going to be able to take your joints through their full range of motion. And then your body has to make some sort of compensation, and that can lead to injury. And just like in the golf swing, if you don't have full range of motion, for example, of your shoulders, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up bending your elbows. So you're going to create a swing compensation that could lead to injury. So you want to do a lot of exercises that help with mobility, a lot of flexibility, a lot of stretching, yoga is great. So a basic movement that you can do just to help with your mobility is called a cross crawl. So if you have a golf club or if you don't have a golf club, just put your hands up like this. And you're just going to practice taking your opposite elbow to opposite knee like this. And so this is a full body mobility exercise. We're doing a ton of things right here. First of all, the upper body is moving separately from the lower body, which is important in the golf swing. We're bringing our knees up, we're getting our heart rate going, and we're activating both sides of the brain because your body are doing opposite things. So this is called a cross crawl, and if I only have like two minutes to warm up before I go play or practice, I do this cross crawl exercise. 
So it's a great mobility exercise. And in that PDF that they're gonna send out to you, I have a couple of their exercises that will help you with mobility. All right, so the second really important um, functional movement is what we call a pushing motion, pushing, just being able to push away. And, um, and this is really important movement in the golf swing, but also just in life, you need to be able to push things away, push the door open. You need to be able to have some upper body strength to do things. So push-ups, believe it or not, are one of the best exercises to do. Not everybody can do a full-blown push-up, so there are a couple ways to modify it. I'll show you. You can get down on your knees, and I'm using my slope. It's a little bit elevated, so it adds um, the element of raising up, so I'm not using my total upper body, but I'm still getting the benefit of doing the push-up exercise. So we would call these girl push-ups, but you're on your knees and you're really getting your chest and back. You're also getting a lot of grip strength, which is important in golf. And we'll talk about this in a second. I'm gonna ask Kay, because um, if you saw at the US Open, the rough was really thick and you have to have a lot of grip strength to get your, um, you know, that club head through the grass. So push-ups are really important. To, that's going to help your chest and back. Also, that's going to help your posture. When your back muscles and chest are um, stronger, then it's easier to hold good posture in life and in the golf swing. All right, the next exercise that uh, we're going to do is a pulling motion. And I recommend that people, uh, especially women, do some resistance. You don't have to do heavy weights, but you definitely want to invest and some weights where you can do some exercises that are gonna help build some strength. And one of the best exercises that you can do for a pulling motion is called a row. So you would get into like a modified golf posture and then you're gonna row your arms back. So this is really getting the chest and especially the back. These are the muscles in your back that you don't see but are really unnecessary, really necessary um, to hold your shoulders back away from your ears, otherwise we're gonna be hunched over like this. And this is a great exercise to help counter all the sitting that we've been doing um, during this COVID uh, lockdown. So a pulling motion would be a row, like this. All right, the next motion, and then I'll get paid here and we'll talk a little bit about the golf swing, is just a basic rotation. You need to have the ability to rotate your upper body and lower body separately. So obviously this is really important for the golf swing, but it's also important just for life. You, you might be sitting down and then you have to rotate to look at someone behind you. If you have um, some issues with uh, mobility, especially in your spine, you're not gonna be able to turn around and look behind you, it's gonna be painful. So you wanna be able to do some rotation exercises. So this is just a basic core rotator. So rotation is something that you should be doing in your workout. Also, you want to be doing exercises where you're lowering your body mass and then raising up. So squats are so important to do on a daily basis. In fact, golf is a squat sport. We're going to talk to Kay right now. You start in a squat and then you want to stay in that squat your entire time. If you raise up even just a little bit, you're going to end up flipping at it and you're not going to get your full power. So a squats are really important. And um, I have this little slope that I use for golf, but I also use it for fitness. And one of the best exercises that we do are, are little elevated heels here, and then it's easier to do that squat. So if you have a hard time doing squats, elevating your heels like this makes it a little bit easier, and you still get the benefit of the squat exercises. So that's a basic movement that you want to be doing every day to help not only your fitness, but your golf swing. And so let's just talk a little bit to Kay and so she can kind of maybe take us through what some of the pros are doing because I'm really interested of how they're elevating their game and their fitness right now. Well, certainly I think you really hit, hit the nail on the head with um, especially women have a tendency to not be as strong in the upper body and their arms. Um, we tend to be quite strong in our quads and our glutes and maybe our core, but um, not naturally as strong in the upper body. And I, I see a lot of the women across the board, the already inherently strong women and the ones that need to improve their strength, working, working constantly on upper body exercises, working on 
scapula stabilization exercises, working on those rows, on the rows health exercises, anything to increase your chest and your upper back strength, because that's just going to help you stay more stable through the golf swing and create more power because the whole torso and the core work together with the upper back, um, being able to stabilize your, your upper, upper back and keep the, keep the, um, the club stable through impact. If you're weak in this upper back area, then your lower body takes over and then your upper your upper body is sort of just hanging on for the ride. So it's very important for women to spend extra time working on upper back exercises. I, I love that point. So, okay, you know, um, when I, I see a lot of people and I do a lot of uh, golf fitness evaluations and most women, women don't give themselves enough credit, are incredibly strong in their core and their lower body because those are the places that we work on where they're a little bit weaker in their shoulders, their chest, and their grip strength. And so um, in golf, you need to have a certain amount of grip strength and forearm strength, like I said, to square the club face. And especially in that rough, I mean, wouldn't you say that most of the guys that did well at the U.S. Open were strong and they had um, really strong upper bodies that they were able to get through that rough? Definitely. And, and the stronger you are, the more swing speed you create and the more ball speed you create. And so when you have a high ball speed and high swing speed, you can get through that rough better and without as much resistance. If you're weak, the, uh, the club gets sort of grabbed up into the, in the grass and sort of turns the club face over and you barely get it out of the grass. If you have a lot more club head speed, which equates to strength, um, you get the ball with more height, and more carry, and you can even possibly get it on the front of the green, which makes a tremendous. Right. Would you say the sand too? I would say um, a lot of uh, women that come to see me, they, they have a hard time in the sand, and mostly because they don't have that grip strength. You know, the sand is stopping the club as you swing through, so you have to have a certain amount of grip strength. So push-ups, I recommend people, women, anybody that needs more grip strength, do push-ups to increase all that um, strength in the upper body. Well, Karen, and I think um, this is on your website too. There's a lot of modifications. And I know there was a question earlier about someone, what you can do in phase one, you know, just, just starting a workout routine. And you've addressed that. You have a lot of um, basic exercises and then ways that you can build upon it. Right over here, I've got this um, pretty tall, tall banister I have right here. Uh, you can use a... a like the kitchen table, you can use a high table, and that's another way that you can lean into it and do some of these push-ups, and it's it's a more modified version that's a lot easier. But shoot, if you're in the kitchen working around or you're in your office, you can just lean up against your desk and do some of these plank push-ups, and they're a lot easier, but if you do them properly, they're building strength, and you could whip out 10 or 12 of those a couple times a day while you're, you know, just tooling around the house or in the office. Right. And I would say um, a lot of the times, if you don't like to do push-ups, that's because you need to do push-ups. So if you started maybe just with three or four, one day, the next day did five or six, work up to 10, 15 push-ups to do that every other day. That would really help um, your upper body strength and, and your core strength. It's a total body exercise, actually. If there's one exercise, I would recommend it would be the push-up. And what about maybe um, even, I'm a big believer in planks. Um, and I think really push -ups, right? help you ease into push-ups and you can either, maybe you can um, demonstrate that a uh, plank that you do either on your arms or on your, on all fours. And yeah, so <laughs> planks are really great. So what's great about my cardio golf slope is that because it's elevated, it does take some upper body weight off, so you can do some exercises that you might not be able to do um, on the floor. So, like you said, getting in all fours like this, tucking your toes under, and then just practice hovering your knees. We call this beast pose, because you're like an animal pose right here. And this right here, it's firing my core, my shoulders, and you hold it for five, ten seconds, and then you rest down. So that would be a good way to start just practicing getting into plank pose. And then as you get stronger, you can do the planks on your knees or even 
full blow planks like this is a great exercise. And there's tons of different ways to do planks. Also, you can do them on your elbows. Doesn't necessarily mean it's any easier, but um, it just depends on how um, it feels for your body. Um, and when you start to do a, a workout program, it's important to make sure that you get assessed to know which exercises are appropriate for your fitness level and if you have any injuries. And also, like I said, a lot of the times, you know, um, the ladies breeze through the flexibility part because they're very flexible. But what they really need is that upper body strength, whereas for the men tend to be a little bit stronger in their upper body and they need a little bit more core and flexibility um, uh, exercises. So you have to determine what's best for you. Karen, uh, we're getting a good question uh, from someone, if they're working at their desk or at home, what are some specific exercises that you can do to increase your hand strength? And I just happen to have this small, this is just a very small melt ball exercise that you can squeeze um, between each finger one at a time, uh, use your whole hand. There are actually, I wish I had them here, there's these devices that that are almost like a spring-like device that you can squeeze and let go, and they come in varying um, strength levels. And just so you can take a work really well. Yeah, you can just take a golf club. This is my shorty club, and if you have this around, and what you do is you start at the bottom, and then you walk your fingers up the grip like this. So this is really working all the your um, wrist extensors. And this is also great for people that tend to type on the computer a lot. So you're getting some mobility and some strength. So you would do a few repetitions up and down. And then also just holding the end of the club like this, extending your arm out, and then working on rotation, trying to keep your arm extended as you do these um, exercises. So this is great work right here to help with that forearm strength. And also it's going to help you learn how to square the club face. So these are great exercises to do. Obviously, if you go more in the middle, then it's a little less weight. If you go more towards the end, it's a little bit more weight, so you can work up to doing that. But those are great exercises. So let your fingers do the walking. And I promise you, if you did that a few minutes every day, it would really help um, a lot of the people that tend to get carpal tunnel. It's a good exercise to do. Um, I, I travel a lot, obviously I'm going to back this up just a little bit. And Karen, I'm a big believer in these, um, these bands too. And there's a lot of things that you can do with these bands. This one you can, um, put into a door hinge and, and do a variety of all the exercises that, that Karen has, has taught us. And then even something that's along the rowing that you just mm -hmm. talked about a few minutes ago, I'll go over to this post. I have this post here. If you guys can see me and you just you can get into a squat position and pull you know do your your it's almost like you're doing a seated row and, and what I love about bands K is that um, they help increase the strength but they also stretch you at the same time so you're not going to get big and bulky as opposed to doing like bigger uh, free weights so right. stretch bands are a great alternative if you if you need to work on your flexibility at the same time. Yeah, when I when I travel on the road, I have this little bag, and it's like basically I've got bands and um, just something I can carry really easy that's light that enables me to add a few extra um, resistance just with my body weight because. Mm -hmm. We have our own body weight and we can do all these exercises, um, stabilization exercises and resistance just using your body weight. So you bring up a good point. So you travel with that. So you, we were talking about this before we started um, the seminar about how both of us feel that it's better to do a few minutes of work every day than to wait until you have a couple hours at the end of the week. Usually those long practice sessions or those workouts never happen. But if you just spent like five or 10 minutes. If you had a shorty club and then you just spent a few minutes doing a few practice swings every day, it would keep your muscles loose. So then when you did finally get to the course, you know, you're not like starting over each time, trying to figure out your grip or trying to loosen up your muscles. You would already be that way. No, that's a really good point. And even uh, high level professionals and players like myself and Karen who 
you know, we don't practice, we don't practice as much as we used to when we were playing in, in competitions. But if I'm working on something, I, I just get here right in my living room and, you know, grip my club. And obviously having a shorter club is a little safer. Yes, it's so that you don't have the ceilings or the walls. <laughs> but even just, you know, gripping, feeling the club and just taking little half swings and feeling, you know, for me, when I don't practice a lot, it's very important to feel that everything is syncing up. And so I just want to swing a few and just feel that I'm clipping clipping the carpet. If I'm taking big chunks out of the carpet, then I'm, I'm hitting too heavy. I'd be hitting heavy. I'd be hitting the turf before the ball. If I'm missing the carpet, then I'm hitting, I'd be hitting the top of the ball and probably hitting it thin. So a lot of it for me is just feeling like I'm syncing up my, my turn and my acceleration through. I'm feeling like I'm getting that, that nice feedback. If I hear a big clunk, that means I hit it a little too heavy. So, um, you know, if you swing the club 10 to 12 times, 20 times a night, if you did that every day or every other day, by the time you went out and played golf next time, you'd be so much more ahead of where you were just because you've been touching the club, you've been building strength, you've been you know, exactly. working on your, your stance, your posture, all those things that we should be working on daily. Right. And that's such a good point. And sometimes people say, well, I don't want to swing the club because I don't want to ingrain bad habits if I'm swinging incorrectly. Well, you're not going to be because when you, most of the time our practice swings are usually better tempo, they're smoother than our real swing. So if you did more practice swings, it would actually help your real swing. How about Karen? Um, I've been noticing that on the men's and women's tour with all this additional strength and workout and kind of the the, the new way of teaching um, even youngsters is about hitting it as far as you can, hitting it as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. And then we'll work on um, bringing the accuracy part in afterwards. So these kids are now just learning to swing 110%. What's your best um, thought on how to teach people to increase speed and get swinging faster? Yeah, that's a good point. So um, I have a, a cardio golf TV subscription and I actually have what I call my club head speed workout and there's a couple of things that will help you increase your club head speed without actually even swinging harder first of all the grip pressure is really important if you have tight grip pressure if you're holding on to it as tight as you can your muscles are going to tighten up so you won't be able to swing freely so just by loosening up that grip pressure the other thing is, is learning to sequence uh, your swing correctly, okay? You know, a lot of the times we try to hit it with our upper body first. Well, you're actually doing that incorrectly and you're actually slowing your swing down. So just by learning the sequence of learning how the lower body initiates and then the arms swing through after is going to help create club head speed. And then the third thing is just getting used to swinging the club faster. One of the exercises that I have is, um, I call it just speed swings, and we set up and then we try to swing as fast as we can, uh, trying to finish in balance. And you just need to learn how to, um, you know, get used to swinging faster. So if you did it with a shorty club, there's no judgment of where the ball goes so that you can learn to swing faster so that when you get to the course, it will feel more comfortable. Sometimes if you're trying to hit it harder, you miss hit the ball, so then you're like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's not, and that's a really good term. It's not about swinging harder. It's really about swinging faster and creating that acceleration from this point in the swing to this point in the swing. And at first, you're a little out of your comfort zone and you feel like your balance isn't there when you're trying to increase that speed. But believe me, doing it get better and better at it. I did notice one question um, is it okay to do push ups every day? You know, um, that's a good question. So um, I would say, uh, yes, it is okay to do push-ups every day as long as you're balancing out it with an exercise to help your back. So the push-ups are for your chest. Push-ups you, are for your chest. So then if, if you're doing a push-up, you want to make sure you do an exercise to help your back because you don't just want to develop the, the, um, the muscles up in the front. You can't neglect the ones in the back. So I would say it would be better maybe to um, to do a, a push-up exercise one day and then a row exercise the next day just to balance it out. 
So you don't want to just do one exercise. That's why really all the five um, different movements that we talked about, it's important to incorporate all those um, movements into your routine to build a, a really like solid um, balanced program. Okay, I have um, one other suggestion. I'm gonna bring my, my prop. You know, this is my, my this is my 23 pound pug Darby. And you know, I could add I could add him to my my squat exercise. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'll, I'll turn it around. Do you like that, Darby? <laughs> Good form, right? You gotta do that before he eats his breakfast, right? <laughs> Now you can. Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend going up into the 45, 50 pound uh, dog. That might get a little dangerous. <laughs> so I shouldn't do that with my husky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I hate to say it. It is two thirty. Um, you know, we have run out of time yet again. Um, but here's the amazing thing. You know, Karen obviously has just touched the surface on her cardio golf program. And um, we're going to be sharing some information on it after you guys um, end today's webinar. We'll have a link we'll share. We'll email it out to everyone um, on the exercises that she did show today, as well as a link to her cardio golf um, program, cardiogolf.com. Actually pretty easy to remember. And then she did mention that she has just launched Cardio Golf TV. So that is another feature that I believe, Karen, you're given a free trial for, for a short time. Yeah, on the link, um, you, you'll go and you can have a, a free trial and you can browse all the workouts and try them out. Wonderful. So, yeah. Um, Carol, yeah. I just wanted to remind people too, you can always look and follow some of your favorite LPGA players on Instagram or Twitter. They usually are posting videos of their exercise routine and you might get some ideas as well and i know both karen and i have exercised our entire lives we've learned so many different routines and it's about being safe and finding the best ones that are best for your body yes definitely and you know as we wrap this up that is such a perfect point you know really listen to your body um, talk to a, you know, a medical expert if you feel that you do have some ailments that you need to get clearance on, as well as, you know, whether it is Karen, who is a certified trainer or someone at your gym, if you're a member at a gym to, to give you the best advice for you. And, um, obviously if you have limitations, we don't want to push you in that direction. So please always get some good advice first. Um, these are great tips to get you started. Um, but you know, we're going to wrap this up with, you know, one of our great stories that is coming out of 2020, which is our drive on story of Sophia Popoff. Um, she is this year's AIG, uh, women's open winner. And, you know, she talked to, to the media and to, you know, to all of us golf fans just recently after she won that, um, you know, she almost gave, gave up the game of golf because of medical problems, not fitness related, but medical problems. So to see someone who stuck with it and achieve and succeed at the highest level is truly, you know, one of those special stories of 2020. So we're going to finish this off with her. And I know I just saw a few more questions come in. We'll make sure we answer those for you um, in that email that we send out. But thank you all for joining us um, on this great uh, lunch session for golf and fitness. Thanks, it's an honor. This is for every girl who won't give up on her dreams. This is for every girl who's faced heartbreak, hardship, or illness and doesn't back down. For every girl who believes that on any given week, it can happen for her. And who embraces the moment when belief and opportunity come together and her dreams come true. I, I almost quit playing last year, so thank God I didn't. <laughs> I'm Sophia Popov and I drive on. Karen Kay, once again, thank you for joining us and for everyone who um, called in today, thank you for attending this great lunch session. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me.